Climate adaptation is crucial to risk reduction. How important is the role of the Department of Science, Technology through PAGASA and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in ensuring our people are safe from harm when typhoons strike our country? Joining us tonight is Congressman Mel Senen Sarmiento, an advocate of climate change and risk reduction. Good evening, sir, and welcome to News Live. Good evening, Robert. Sir, would you say that PAGASA is now better equipped in monitoring weather disturbances in the country? There's a big improvement, really. Uh, and, and slowly, there's a change in mindset. Uh, we basically started uh, being reactive. If you look at the law, even the local government code, the 5% allocation in the past is for a um, calamity fund. One has to wait for a calamity to happen before <laughs> a local government unit or the national government, for that matter, is able to utilize the fund. And uh, 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 the National Disaster Risk and Management uh, uh, law was passed uh, a few years ago, and uh, we have somewhat shifted from a uh, proactive position to a reactive position to that of being proactive, where in 70% of the allocation can now be used. Uh, to, to, to prevent a disaster or in reducing the risk for that matter. So there's a great improvement from response side to uh, uh, the, the preparedness side as well. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we should be looking into. Uh, DOST has greatly somewhat helped us by, by providing us the early warning system that we need. But uh, we need to change uh, the mindset of the people uh, by looking at... Uh, the possible ways of reducing the risk. So w with all of these, are local governments now better informed to deal with emergencies whenever a typhoon hits the respective areas? They're better informed, but DNR has done a lot uh, in providing a multi-hazard mapping and providing the same to the local chief executives. But digesting the, the information is another challenge for local governments. Not. Uh, and there are a good number of local governments that we feel might still need the help of national government in trying to digest the information given them and looking for ways in uh, improving uh, their resilience and uh, changing the, the kind of uh, the mindset that we currently have uh, as experience uh, with some of the more advanced countries uh, looking at Japan uh, specifically. Sir, as an advocate of climate change and risk reduction, Mitigation strategy, strategies should be adopted. Strategies can be different from one local government to another. As, as we see here in the Philippines, we have so many different islands. And um, during typhoons, each uh, sector is hit differently. Yeah, uh, the Philippines is uh, one of the more vulnerable countries. Uh, there's a big debate in the global arena uh, with uh, regard to uh, the, the, the ranking of the Philippines. But uh, at the end of the day, we're in the top 10 as one of the more uh, vulnerable countries uh, facing a good number of hazards every year. And uh, it's imperative for us to, 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 first of all, to know the hazard mm -hmm. and to determine the number of people exposed and who are vulnerable. We should uh, further go down to the household level in educating that household the hazard that they face and what they're supposed to do just in case the hazard is there to reduce the risk, knowing uh, the, the number of people exposed and who are the more vulnerable ones. We're talking the senior citizens, a, a, a pregnant mother, and then the likes. But uh, really, there's a good model. A few months ago, I attended, uh, a couple of months back, I attended the global platform in Geneva, and uh, Schumart was nominated uh, for the Sasakawa Award, looking at the SM Marikina, the way they designed it. It's a mall on steel that's adapting to climate change, knowing that there is always that the possibility of, of flooding in the area. They, they saw to it that the design of uh, uh, their mall is, uh, uh, has, you know, it has, has adapted to, to the effects of climate change. And even Wonder Malls in Muntang Lupa, likewise, was nominated for, uh, for its... Uh, 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 disaster risk uh, uh, project by uh, 
uh, coming up with the design that can withstand seismic movement as well now, to prevent so an earthquake to damage the said, uh, the said mall. So now, what needs to be done um, in terms of um, trying to mitigate this um, prevention, as we say, um, more prevention than reaction? You know, there's one nice picture that I normally would show to people. It's a simple house. It's a house of uh, most an ordinary Filipino a household. It's uh, that, that particular uh, farmer, that, that the farmer basically measured the highest flood water level in their community right after Typhoon Frank in Iloilo and raise his house by coming up with a house on stilt that will prevent uh, them from getting wet, from uh, preventing uh, a local government unit to respond because they've, they've already adapted and uh, came up with the design that is suitable for an area that is prone to, to ship uh, flooding. So in the advent of climate change, are we prepared? And do we see now every year, do we see that the typhoons are getting stronger and stronger? It's, get, it's getting stronger, but we need uh, the help of technical people to design uh, communities. Uh, I, I like the setup of South Korea. They have what they call the NEMA, the National Emergency Management Administration. And it's composed of uh, highly technical people from urban planners, geologists, and uh, what have you, coming up with uh, of, of technical uh, uh, suggestions to the community to be able for them to improve their resilience and adapt to climate change. So we've been doing hazard mapping. We know it's very important. How should local government now plan their communities in the light of the long-term impact of climate change? That's why it's, it, it's imperative for the National Disaster Risk and Management Council not only to uh, review the uh, plan as submitted in compliance to the law, but the, the need for us to provide technical people. If you look at the, the current uh, manpower complement of local governments, they might have in a, a, a local disaster risk and management office, but again, the basic question there that we should be asking, do they have the technical capacity to absorb and come up with the design to help mitigate uh, and, and reduce the risk in the community. Uh, do they have uh, the capacity to simulate a 100-year rain cycle, for example? Uh, is the drainage line enough to absorb the volume of water uh, in their community? And all these things has, uh, technology plays a very important role. Uh, Feebox has already designed a, uh, a, uh, a, a program that can simulate based on the design of the structure, the materials used, the, the design mix in and the likes to simulate whether that particular structure can withstand a 7.8 uh, uh, earthquake, for example. But are the local government units availing of this particular software that Feebox uh, currently uh, have in their possession that we can probably use and encourage the public to, to likewise look at it? Japan, because of the Fukushima experience, they now have a very nice program in ensuring that they're able to build a resilient uh, structure uh, in every household. If one would borrow from the banking system for their, their housing loan, it's a requirement for the owner to submit to the bank the uh, design of the house that can withstand both. It's, it's uh, resilient to flooding, at the same time can withstand a strong earthquake. And prior to the fi final payment of uh, the, the uh, loan package for the said beneficiary, one has to submit first. Uh, uh, an as-built plan it will be inspected by the bank to ensure that it's compliant, it will ensure resilience just in case a super typhoon comes in or a strong earthquake comes in as well. Well, I guess we still have a long way to go, sir. And a final word from you, sir. We really have to um, uh, take charge in this. Um, um, this climate change, take it more seriously now? Yes, we really have to. We have to adapt to the present climatic change. Even our policy makers has to has to adjust. Uh, looking at the agricultural sector, if you look at the, the typhoons, the provinces now prone to typhoons, there's a big difference. Eh? Where I'm coming from, for example, summer, if you talk about summer right away, the connotation is we're, we're number one when it comes to typhoons. But we're not in the top 20 list anymore. Things have changed. So our policymakers as well has to look at the, the effects the, climate, the, 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 the effects of climate change, whatever climatic changes there is, we should likewise adapt 
for us to be able to prepare ourselves for the future. Uh, we keep on saying that Mindanao is the, is the food basket of this country, but looking at the report of some scientists, they're saying that Mindanao is going to be the most vulnerable when it comes to El Nino. Uh, it's going to be the hottest place in the Philippines for that matter. So how do we reconcile again? Mindanao being the food basket, say by 2030, 2040, it's going to be the hottest place in the Philippines. So really, the OST has to do its share, doing research on crop resilience, uh, so that we're able to ensure food security and food sufficiency as well. Okay, on that note, thank you very much for joining us tonight here at Newslag. That was Congressman Mel Senes Sarmiento, a major advocate for climate change and adaptation and risk reduction. Thank you, sir. Thank you. President Aquino inaugurates a new factory of the Japanese firm Brother Industries Incorporated in Tanawan City in Batangas. We'll tell you more when Newslag returns.